Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew, and we are the IB English Guys. Today, we are looking at our fourth text type for our Countdown to Paper One series. Of course, that'll be 10 text types and 20 videos. Today, yeah. we are looking at a product review. Mr. Giles, why are product reviews important? Well, I, we are consumers. We, we buy things and we need to educate ourselves about these products before we buy them. We might see a product review on a website. We might see a product review, on, of course, on Amazon, but also in magazines, lots of different places. Mr. Giles, people don't want to waste their money. They That's want to right. know what they're getting before they purchase it. That's why product reviews are super helpful. What do you say we talk about some of the conventions of product reviews? Let's talk about that. The first convention is really the credibility of the, the writer and the reviewer themselves. Who is making this review and how do they have establish a relationship with their reader. Yeah, and one of the ways they establish that relationship is by telling stories, personal stories and anecdotes. Anytime the reviewer can close that distance between uh, the reviewer and the consumer, the reader, that's always positive and that builds ethos. The next, the next convention is talking about industry trends. They're thinking about the products and how this product is a reflection of new trends in, in technology or new trends in that industry. And this is again what they're going to be tapping into. Sure, and as they're examining the industry, they want to think about uh, how do they feel? Are they positive about the product? You want to look for emotive language. If they're feeling positive, they'll use really positive adjectives and adverbs. If it's a product they don't enjoy much, you'll see, of course, pessimistic and, and negative emotive language. Right. Because it's a review, we also want to look for evaluative language. We want to think about the reviewer talking about the effectiveness of the product or good features of the product and, and how they are evaluating those. Yeah. And of course, you want to think about the product specifications as well. If you're buying a computer, you want to know how much RAM is there. Uh, maybe you want to know about the processor, right? So they have to give you those precise specifications so you can get the details. Yeah, similarly, we want to look at product features. We want to think about the descriptions of the product and maybe its, its particular appearance or also something about the functionality of the product. Right, and sometimes you will see jargon. Of course, that's that technical language that's for people that are familiar with the industry. Maybe if you're buying a camera, Mr. Giles, you'll see comments on uh, f-stop or ISO. People who aren't really familiar with photography might not know that, but that jargon, those technical terms, are helpful for people who are savvy in the industry. That's right. We also see comparisons to other products, other similar products, and we see comparisons. So if you're if they're, if they're reviewing a vacuum cleaner, they might be looking at other vacuum cleaners in that um, same, same pro product text type. Yeah, and of course, if they're going to talk about those other products and make those comparisons, you will see hyperlinks. Uh, so the reader can quickly link, uh, click, and, and compare themselves and make their own educated conclusion. Okay, so let's take a look at our review now. And our review is from GQ Magazine. It was published in 2020, uh, January 2020. So it's a fairly recent um, uh, review in a, in a men's, generally a men's magazine. Indeed. Uh, and the guiding question that will go with this text, which is something you want to be thinking about, is how does the author combine narrative elements with a product review to make a claim about electric bicycles? Ooh, good question. I like that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to read the text aloud to you. You can see the text. We have links to the text for you in the, in the description here. Making moles hills out of mountains. Every year I go cycling with a friend of mine in the foothills of the Pyrenees. Vlad is quite a serious cyclist, as he spends at least a month each summer bombing up and down hills around the Banyuls sur mer acting like a potential Tour de France competitor, although without the accompanying drug habit. In Vlad's case, it really is about the bike. On the odd occasion I follow him up hills, I usually look as though I've dressed for the beach, because I invariably forget to begin the appropriate, bring the appropriate kit. Which means that while I might be riding a ridiculously expensive racing bike, I'll be wearing a Hawaiian shirt, combat shorts, and a pair of neon Birkenstocks. You get the picture. Vlad will scoot up the hill, though, we actu though actually we always refer to it as a mountain, as if he was just popping out for a pint of milk, while I dutifully shadow him, wheezing like a weekend triathlete. At some point on the journey, well, at many points actually, I will have to dismount, push the bike for a while, and get my breath back. This will usually take until I reach the summit, where I will find Vlad doing press-ups, burpees, and theatrically looking at his watch. Took your time, he'll say, before getting on his bike and whizzing off again. This year, though, my experience was somewhat different. This year, I decided to ride an electric bike. When I first got on the Comensal MetaPower 29 Team 2020 and started to pedal, I didn't notice anything at all. Vlad's house was at the top of a steep hill by the coast, and as I freewheeled down to the town, nothing seemed in any way out of the ordinary. But as soon as I hit the seafront and started pedaling along the road through town, 
I felt a strange kind of surge, almost as though I was being gently pushed from behind, which in a way I was, as my come and saw literally kicked into gear. For the next three hours, I experienced something completely transformative. Not only did it make my journey through the foothills a hell of a lot easier, but I also managed to humiliate Vlad in the process. My bike was one of those whose electric motor is regulated by pedaling, augmenting the rider's input. What this means is you feel a bit like E.T. when Elliot's bike starts to fly, as you are continually rewarded for your efforts. In the past 10 years or so, the growth of e-bikes has been huge, so much so that there are now hundreds of reputable options, although it's only recently that people you know have actually started to use them. My Comensol had three modes. Eco, which I immediately labeled Mimsy, Quite Fast, at least I think it was called this, and Super Bastard Turbocharged, and a small selection of gears within each band. His battery had five charge bars, which will easily last you about half a day's riding, even if you spend most of that time going uphill. The MetaPower 29, also available in a Ride 2020 version for uh, Euro 3880, is basically a glorified mountain bike with fat 29 inch tires and a fairly rugged constitution. The gears are simple to understand. It's easy to see how much power you're using and its designers haven't tried to disguise the fact that it's really a lifestyle accessory. Well, it might be a lifestyle accessory for some, but for me, it was a lifesaver. This year, as Vlad bent over his machine, his quads popping like chicken fillets, I blithely overtook him with the frozen margarita in one hand and the latest Robert Harris in the other. Which leads me to my conclusion. A, people who ride proper bikes all hate those who ride e-bikes. And B, we don't care. All right, Mr. Giles, <laughs> really engaging piece of writing. What yeah. do you say we break it down and talk about it? Again, our guiding question is, how does the author combine narrative elements with a product review to make a claim about electric bicycles? That's Start right. us off, Giles. Good, so we're gonna talk side by side about the left and the right when we talk about this. First of all, I love the title of this review, Making Moles Hills Out of Mountains. It subverts the sort of common cliche of mountains out of molehills, and that subversion is turning it upside down, which is again quite clever, and it all taps into the idea of him climbing up the mountain. Yeah, and I think when we get into the first paragraph itself, Mr. Giles, I just love how uh, they start this, this juxtaposition of the way Val Vlad is portrayed as a character versus our writer, right? And they compare Vlad through simile to a potential Tour de France competitor. Of course, this is the most famous bicycle race in the world, and that just really emphasizes how, how much Vlad takes, how seriously he takes this. Yeah, and this writer has some great parenthetical uh, remarks like where he talks about, in Vlad's case, it was it's not about the bike. Again, that reference to Lance Armstrong. And then we see him talking about how he looks like he's been dressed for the beach, we see this imagery of him wearing a Hawaiian shirt and combat shorts and Birkenstocks. And again, we see this sort of sense of humor. He's very self-deprecating. Gives him ethos. We like this guy. He's yeah. got humor and ethos. And I I'm love his hooked. choice of verbs, Giles. We have words like scoot, wheeze. He's just a really clever writer, right? Uh, you know, as he's kind of taking us on his journey, we see them at the top of the mountain, you know, uh, and then we see when we get there, you see that contrast where our writer is quite exhausted and that's contrasted with Vlad doing press ups, burpees and looking at his watch. It's just so classic. You can see the, co the competition between these two. I know. Great, great sentence. Great rule of threes there too. And then again, the dialogue where Vlad says, took your time. And then he gets on his bike and whizzing down again, another great verb. Yeah, I think the next part, Mr. Giles, is really important. I always think students need to look for tone shifts. And this year, comma, though, comma, for me, that, that marker of though really is that transition that shows that the piece is going to go in a different direction. We need to look for those tone shifts. Yeah, it's a narrative. We want to think about, he's told a story here, a small anecdote of him suffering and Vlad doing so well. And now we see the shift. Now we have a new narrative where he's now going to be talking about the product and how the Comensal Meta 29 Team 2020 has allowed him to, to change. Yeah, and how did he change, Giles? Well, we noticed that when he has this new product that he's reviewing, he felt this surge behind his back, you know, like he was being pushed from behind. I think as readers, we feel energetic and we feel excited for him, like he can finally compete with Vlad. Yeah, right? I think the word transformative, that's an adjective and that is a powerful adjective to really show how this product has enabled this writer to transform himself. Yeah, and I love the use of colloquial language. He's very casual with us. He transformed it, it was transformative and made it a lot easier, right? So I do like that. Yeah. Giles, tell me about the illusion. That's my favorite part. Yeah, he's talking about the the e-bike and how the e-bike is making him feel like E.T. when it it's bike starts to fly and this is an iconic image this allusion to 
Again, the the the, the, the flying bicycle. Uh, we love that. It's, it's really clever. It's an iconic playful. image from Spielberg, right? Now, this is the part where we do see conventions of the review come out quite prominently. It is a product review, and we have to get some yeah, details. Yeah, this is your specifications and yeah, features, Yeah, you know, right? I know about the battery. I know how much it costs. I know of the size of the tires. These are just some features, some specifications that any rider would want to know. They need this information so they can make an informed decision. Yeah, that's right. And then in closing, he's saying that although it might be a lifestyle accessory according to the company, and again, a lifestyle accessory is something extra that makes our life better. For him, it's a lifesaver. I love the play on that on that phrase and for him it's all about beating Vlad and so now Vlad is suffering and his quads are popping like chicken fillet so we, now we see this role reversal where yeah. he's the one suffering or Vlad's the one suffering and now he is blithely overtaking and it's interesting because it's circular in nature where we start with that suffering but now it's the other guy suffering I love it and then of course the really clean cool and just clever syntax at the end with the A and the B uh, I think it shows that, yeah, there are two ways to look at this. And if you want to look at me like I'm a coward, I don't care because I'm chilling on my bike. Yeah, and it's it's really clever. And again, we want to think about this is written for a men's magazine. It's not written for a cycling magazine. You know, the e-bike sometimes might get looked down on by, by cycling enthusiasts. And if, frankly, the writer is saying, I don't care. I just want to enjoy my life and I want to be Vlad. It's no. about the competition and the rivalry. Indeed. It's a really cool text, Mr. Giles. It really combines two text types. So, folks, uh, in closing, we'd like you to think about that guiding question. I'll read that aloud. How does the author combine narrative elements with the product review to make a claim about electric bicycles? We recommend you try to answer this question, uh, set yourself a timer, the correct time that you have to write, and then come back in two days. We'll go over a sample response and you can see how you did. In closing, just to my cycling friends, I will never buy an e-bike, but I love this article. I like e-bikes. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>